Hi, it's Shelly Mosley. Today is Friday, June the 16th of 2023. And I have a word to share with you that I actually heard on Father's Day, uh, June the 19th of last year. And so that's what I'm going to share today. I'm not going to get on here tomorrow. We've got family coming in, uh, grandbabies and all that good stuff. So I won't be able to get on here tomorrow. But, um, but this is a Father's Day uh, message. And so I love that the Father just loves on us and shows us his uh, love toward us. And so I'm going to share what it is that he wanted me to, uh, to do. So Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you, Lord, for every single thing that you do on our behalf, the things that are seen and the things that are not seen, Lord. I thank you that no matter what you You've got us. You've got your kids. And I thank you that you, on every side we're protected. I thank you, Lord, for your written word that you've given us. I thank you, Lord, that you give us these uh, messages of encouragement and messages of, of hope, Lord, because you are our only hope. And so, Father, I thank you that as this word goes out, that it would penetrate into the ears and hearts of those who need to hear it. I thank you that it is a great encouragement for those who who just need to to see you and and love on you and and know that you hear us when we call out to you, just like the good father that you are. You are a good, good father. And Lord, we praise you and we thank you for it. Put a hedge of protection around this channel, around this word. I thank you, Lord, that you just let your glory fall in Jesus' name. Lord, have your way during this time. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Speak through me. I'm a willing vessel. Use me for your glory. It's all for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. And um, thank you for all the uh, prayer requests that you guys ha have asked for. We have been praying for you. We're believing with you. We're in agreement with you. There's so many, um, there's so many heart wrenching prayer requests. I get when I read them, my heart just goes out to you. And um, but know that you are not alone. God hears you. He sees you where you are and he is answering. And I am standing in full agreement of what he is about to do uh, for you and for me and for all those who, who love him. He has a plan and, pur and purpose for us. And so if you need prayer for anything, please comment. Um, if you've already asked for prayer, know that um, I'm, I'm writing them down and we are praying over those needs and uh, those things for you and we're believing with you in agreement and so uh, just keep them coming and i love reading the praise report so keep those coming as well because that just shows that god is moving on your behalf on my behalf he's answering i've actually had some prayers answered that um, i prayed many years ago and so it might not come when we want it or when we think we need it but his timing is always perfect he's never late um he's an on-time god just like that old song uh, says he is an on-time god and he's not bound to time like we are um so he knows he knows and he he sees it all and he knows it all so be blessed in that and know be able to stand and know in faith that he hears you so this word um, was from Father's Day, June the 19th of 2022. And there's some encouraging things in it. Um, and I get it. There's some people that have commented and said, this didn't encourage me. Well, I'm very sorry about that. I pray that you're encouraged because God sends different things to us. Um, and sometimes we don't feel like it, it goes, it, it meets what we need at that moment. But sometimes when you hold on to it a little longer, you'll see that maybe it was something meant for you. And if it's not, then that's okay too. But no, be encouraged that God knows where you are. He meets you where, where you are. He sees you where you are. I love that there's some people that, that are questioning their hearts, that they're, they're saying, I don't know if my heart's good or not. The very fact that you're asking that shows that you are stirred and that you are concerned and and so know that if you've truly repented for what you've done no matter what it is no matter how big it is i mean sin is big in our eyes and we kind of gauge it like you know murder might be worse than this thing or this thing might be you know less than that but 
to, to God, sin is all the same. So no matter what you've done, repent and he forgives you and let that thing go. Don't let it, don't let that fear grasp you and, and take hold of you because that is not God's, that's not God. That is not God. He does not give us a spirit of fear. He gave us the spirit of power, his power and love and a sound mind. And that is what he, he intends for us to use. He gave us the authority to, to use. And so his name is that authority. So he said, <clears throat> for I, the Lord have come down from my throne to do a work for my people. I have heard the cries and I feel their mourning. I will not leave them in a state of hopelessness. No, never. I have been working on their behalf and soon all will see firsthand what I've been up to. I have a grace towards my people that cannot be measured by time a grace that covers much and mercy that is not earned. My mercy stands when in reality it should not. But that is the love of a father. And I'm going to try not to cry. A father who keeps no records of wrongs when repentance is given. And a father of all creation who has plans so grand for his children that should they be that should they accomplish them all, the world in which you live would be a far different place. I want to say that again. A father who keeps no records of wrongs when repentance is given and a father of all creation who has plans so grand for his children that should they accomplish them all, the world in which you live would be a far different place. But still, I bestow these gifts upon all, even the undeserving ones, as you would say. But who are you to determine that, my children? Weren't you lost in your deep sin before I pulled you out? Weren't you doomed to hell before I stepped in and you called upon me? This is the work of the Father. The example of all fathers, the one true God, the Father of all. And even though I see all and I know all, even before you have one thought about anything, I have already stepped in and made a plan for you. I have already made a plan in the desert for you. I have already watered your dry places and removed any stumbling blocks that are set up to hinder you and cause you to fall by the wayside. You have already provided, sorry, I have already provided the lamb for your sacrifice and the plan of salvation that leads you to my gates. I have already done all of that for you, my children. Why wouldn't I do more? Why wouldn't I deliver you now out of the mouth of the lion who tries to rent you in two? I will rescue you. I have told you to keep your faith up. It truly can move mountains when you believe it will do it for you. Remember that I am not like a man. I cannot lie. I would not lie or cover up what I have for you. Rest assured, my children, my plans include your deliverance. All of my plans are for you and never against you. For I have come to set you straight in, the, in my protection and this is what I will do, says the Lord. The things that you have put your stock into by the hands of man cannot stand when I get involved. My children, you wouldn't want them to stand without me on your side. All would crumble. All would be destroyed without my hand of protection upon it. Abandon all these thoughts and hopes that have been placed into the wrong things and give it all to me to work for you. Just as your earthly father helps you, so do I, your heavenly father, work on your behalf, but on a scale so grand it cannot be measured by human standards. For I, your father, am the measuring stick for all earthly fathers. Even the best earthly fathers cannot stand where I stand and do what I can do. 
It is because of my great love for you that I do what I am about to do, my children. It is because of my deep and wide mercy that covers and hides your sin from me that you live with a hope of an everlasting life with me. The blood of mercy and love covers all. Not one is worthy of it, not one. But still, I gave my son for your ransom, my own son I gave to you to save you from yourself. That was a big statement, to, state, to save you from yourself, to save me from myself. As a father, do not think that because I am God, that it did not hurt me deeply to give him over. He was that willing vessel that had to be given up willingly, and he did. He did it all for you out of obedience and trust in me. He does not do anything unless we're in agreement. My will is his will. My words are his word, his words. My ways are his ways. He led by example on the earth and he reigns at my side now. I am the father and he is the son, but yet we are one in the same. His love for you is great and his willingness and his willingness to die a sinless sacrifice proves that all. Jesus paid it all. There is not there is not a way to repay him, but to turn your life over and take the stripes upon his back as your own for your healing, to take his beatings and bruises for your iniquities, to take his battered and broken body for your deliverance. The blood shed for you on Calvary as your, as your covering of sins. He died in your place. He was humiliated for you. This is the great love I have for you, my people, that the world would be saved and live their lives for me is my desire. So on this day to celebrate fathers, know that I am the blueprint of all fathers. Look to me when your own fathers, your earthly fathers abandon you. Look to me when they disappoint and hurt you. They only know what they know in the earthly realm without my love and guidance. I will never leave you or abandon you, my children, for I am good and my mercy endures forever. I cannot be measured. My love for you holds no candle to the love your earthly father has for you. Celebrate this day. Celebrate that your heavenly father, all you'll ever have need of. I love you with the love that no man can ever take away. I love you with a heart like no other. Praise me for being the father you need. My intentions toward you are always good and my mercy is irrevocable. The best gift you can give me on this father's day is to lead by my perfect example. Follow me wherever I go. Say what I tell you to say. Talk to me. Commune with me. Visit with me like we're old friends. Love me and praise me and praise my wonderful name. This is my desire, my precious children, is to have you see yourselves what I see when I look at you through eyes of love. And that was the end. That is very, um, his heart is so, his, is so much towards us. And yes, his mercy does endure forever. And the mercy is extended. But the problem is that people have their own free will. He gave us our own free will. The angels have their own free will, which is why Satan did what he did. He had a free will. And people have a free will. And we can... We can, um, God made it available when Jesus died for us. He made it available for you and me to come to him. We no longer have to sacrifice bulls and, and, and lambs. And we don't, we don't have to have a priest go in for us 
you know, but between into the Holy of Holies and sprinkle the blood. We don't have to do that anymore. Jesus rent that curtain in two when he died and he, when he resurrected, all of that changed. And so we no longer have to do that, but God's love is so towards us and his mercy is for everlasting. But the thing is, is that that mercy is extended to people and many people slap his hand away. They don't want it. They don't want his mercy. His mercy does endure forever, but there's a decision that has to be made to, to take that or not. And so when he said that he is coming down um, from his throne, I thought when I, when he first told me that, I thought that's kind of crazy, you know, but I've actually heard a couple of other prophets say, that Jesus or that God was stepping up, stood up from his throne and was coming down. And so I was like, okay, Lord, that's not crazy after all. But, but the love of a father, if you don't know your father, your earthly father, if you don't have a good relationship with your earthly father, if your earthly father hurt you or abused you, you have the, the father of all fathers to run to. I was so blessed to have um, a, a good earthly father. I have a very good daddy. And, and that is such a blessing to me, but many people don't have that. And because of that, they their relationship with God is rocky because they don't have, all they knew was their earthly father hurt them and abandoned them. But that's not how God is. God's, God's not a man. And so he's the measuring stick of all fathers. So if you don't have um, a relationship with him, it's so easy. It's so easy just to come to him and and give your heart to him. And we're going to pray here in just a second. But I wanted to give you a few scriptures to share with you. Um, so God's heart is revealed over and over and over again in his written word. But it but it is manifest through prophetic words. Um, he expresses you know in prophecy and in, in prophetic words he expresses his feelings his intent his um his love toward mankind i mean we see that over and over in these words and he approve what he approves of and what he doesn't approve of his agenda and so on and so on and and the the thing is is prophetic words are what god intends to happen we should always be asking God to, to give us a heart um, that aligns with his heart, to give us that, to let our will align with his will. Um, because when our will and his will line up, then, then the major <laughs> things can be accomplished because what he wants for us can be done when we turn that over to him. We lay our pride down and we give that to him. But Jeremiah 29, 11, which this is the one we quote all the time, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not harm you, plans to give you hope and a future, says the Lord. And um, Amplified goes on, it says, for I know the plans and thoughts I have for you, says the Lord, plans for peace and for well-being and not for disaster to give you a future and a hope. And so we, we have to remember that God has a plan in place for us. He intends these things for us, but we have to be the willing participant that asks him into our hearts, into our lives to, to um, do what, what he wants to do, to have his way. And so I'm going to do, I'm going to lead you in the sinner's prayer right now. And this is something I haven't done on this channel, but I'm probably going to start doing it because the more people that watch it, some people aren't saved. And, and I just, I'm asking that you be in prayer with me that whoever needs to see these, um, if, if it's just a one chance thing that they happen to find it, many of you have commented that I just ran across it. God led me there. And, and that is, that's been my prayer all along, but God has such a desire um, he, he has a desire that no man, that no man be lost, that every man be saved. That is his, that is his desire and it's his will. It's not his will that any man perish. And so, but we have to turn our will over to him 
to, to do that because he is such a good father. He's such a good, good daddy. He just is. And he, he answers us. He hears us. He loves on us. There's so many times when people, um, random people might encourage you that you haven't heard from in a long time. And, and sometimes that's just the love of the father being sent to you. You'll, you'll come across a, a passage in scripture that's meant just for you. And that's the love of the father and, and messages at church and, and different songs even. I mean, even some secular songs that I have felt got the love of God in some secular songs that are just like a love song. And I'm like, wow, Lord, you love me. And so when we, I used to walk around at random times when, when I would doubt, when the devil would come in and I would doubt that the, you know, that I disappoint, disappointed the Lord so much that he just possibly couldn't love me, but that's not the truth. And I would walk around going, Lord, you love me. You love me. And I would tell myself out loud, the Lord loves me. So we're going to pray right now. Pray with me. Um, it's very simple. It, it's not a it's not a difficult thing to do, um, but just follow along with me, um, and and that's what we're going to do. I'm going to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you right now, and I recognize that I need a Savior in my life, and I'm not it. And Lord, I am sorry for all my sins. I am sorry for everything that I've done against you that would hurt you and offend you. And I no longer want that life. I invite you into my heart right now to be the Lord over my life, to be the Lord and Savior over my heart. I invite you in and I thank you for what you've done. I recognize that Jesus died on the cross for me, for my sins, and that his blood was shed to cover me. And that you paid that price, Lord. You paid it with your life, with your son's life. And I'm so thankful for it. So I invite you in right now in Jesus' name. And I thank you, Lord, that your word says that he who has, that he who has been set free is free indeed. And so, Lord, I thank you for that in Jesus' name. I give you the praise and glory and honor. Amen and amen. Thank you, Lord. And it's that simple. If you are, if you haven't been saved before this moment, welcome to the family of God because he wants you and he loves you. So you guys be blessed. Have a wonderful weekend. If you have your dad around, spend some time with him. Call him. If you don't, love on the Lord because he loves you. You're his child and he wants nothing but good for you. So be blessed, you guys. I'll see you next time.